Chapter 1. Soak up knowledge by learning how to learn. Learning isn't as easy as simply reading something and then boom, you know it, you remember it, you're a pro. Learning comes down to understanding, memorizing, using, and being motivated to do it in the first place. The only skill that matters scratches the surface of learning and teaches us how to learn more effectively. Not only will you be able to read faster and save time, but you'll retain that information for use in the future. The Super Learner series of learning books and hacks has helped more than 200,000 students succeed. The easy-to-follow logical information in this book will help you tap into your learning potential and shoot for the stars. You don't have to struggle, and you don't always have to wish that you could learn faster. It's already within you. Information coming at us from left, right, and center overloads us. In just one year alone, we see around 600,000 new books published, and those are only the English ones. In addition, we have digital media, news, and TV media, and all of it enters our brains and causes us to feel more than a little overwhelmed. I need not scare you with the statistics of how many millions of posts, tweets, videos, and podcasts are shared every day on the internet, because the chances are you felt it. Jonathan A. Levi It's draining, it's tiring, and it forces you to feel pressured into understanding everything that comes your way. More than ever before, we must know far more in our individual fields. And if you want to stay ahead of the game and beat the promotion competition, it's on you to learn at a faster pace and in a more efficient way. As a result, we have very little time for the fun things in life, such as reading for pure pleasure. By learning how to take on board more information and understand it, you can free up some time for yourself. We are bombarded with information every day, but most of it is useless to us individually. This summary helps you understand strategies and techniques to learn more effectively, hold on to more information, analyze it, and use it in the best way possible. Chapter 2 You might think you know how to learn, but were you ever taught the most effective way? As we go through life, we need to learn several different skills, but perhaps the most important of them all is how to learn in the first place. Has anyone ever sat you down and taught you how to learn? Levi references Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which explains that we must meet one basic need before thinking about the next one on the list. For instance, we need to sleep, eat, and drink, and then we need to feel safe. After that, we need to feel wanted and loved. Then we need to develop self-esteem, which eventually leads us toward meeting our potential. Effective learning is precisely the same. We need to cover all bases to create the right environment for learning. Jonathan Levi had a hard time at school and as a child, but understanding how to take on and maintain information helped him keep up with his peers and eventually overtake them. It's important to remember that our cavemen and cavewomen ancestors did not learn by reading textbooks. They learned by doing things and understanding the right and wrong way by experience. Approaching learning in this way will help us absorb more information. Keep in mind, many studies have shown that people learn far better when feeling strong, positive emotions and finding the subject matter exciting and fun. Our ancestors began to learn the essential skills in life via their senses, mainly their smell, taste, and sight. These kept them safe from predators and helped them develop critical hunting skills, which aided survival. You can do precisely the same when approaching learning. Learning how to do something by doing is more effective than learning how to do it by reading. After all, if you can learn effectively, you can learn or become anything you want. Jonathan A. Levi Chapter 3 There are six aspects of learning you need to master. Adult learning is quite different from childhood learning. Children start with a fresh canvas, which means that they need to build up their experiences as they go through life. However, adults already have specific experiences that can conflict with new knowledge if it's not explained correctly and if the experience isn't linked to what they're learning. Remember, to absorb, understand, and maintain the information, you need motivation and a reason to do it. Jonathan Levi's mother told him that if it's not in the hands, it's not in the head, meaning that unless you've done it or you're doing it, it's not possible to learn. You basically need to have the experience to learn effectively. Here are the main aspects of adult learning. A foundation. The ability to link previous experience with what you're learning. A reason to learn. The why something must be learned and ability to identify how it will help. Knowledge of when to use the information. An adult needs to have the wisdom to use their knowledge before it loses its power. A link to solving a problem. The ability to understand how the information you're learning will help you in your life and work. An element of self-involvement. Fully involving yourself in the process of learning and immersing yourself in the subject. A motivation to learn. The reason why learning will make life better. Remember, children learn faster than adults because their prefrontal cortex isn't as developed. Adults see things as they are, but children use their imagination. Chapter 4. Plan to learn and look forward to grabbing the benefits. Jonathan Levi tells us about the time he began to learn Russian. He thought he was good enough to converse with locals, so he went to Moscow, but quickly realized that he wasn't as good as he thought. He hadn't seen the bigger picture and realized that grammar changes in conversation. He overestimated his ability because he didn't know about the bigger picture. Keep in mind, when learning, you need to plan for it to be worthwhile. An excellent way to do that is to ask yourself several questions before starting the learning experience, including questioning why you're learning that information in the first place. It will help you attach meaning to what you're doing. Then you should ask yourself what level of knowledge or general understanding you need. 
It may be that you don't need in-depth knowledge, but just like Jonathan Levi when trying to learn Russian, there might be a certain depth you do need to know about. From there, you should work to break the information down into easy-to-manage parts and in the correct order. You should also plan out how to access the information you need to learn, how long it will take you to gain the knowledge realistically, and you also need a plan B, just in case things don't turn out as expected. All this will give you more confidence in the ability to overcome any obstacles that stand in the way of your learning. Did you know, motivation is mainly associated with the cerebral cortex, the reward center of the brain. Chapter 5. You can learn to visualize your way to a better memory. It's no good learning new information if you're not able to retain the information in your memory. The problem is most of us don't have a great memory. However, there are several ways to boost your memory effectiveness, and one of the best is using visualization. This basically comes down to imagining pictures in your mind, linked to the information you're trying to remember, then making that image as obscure and memorable as possible. This is a marker and will help you remember many different things. Visualization is the process of using your imagination, but also really trying to feel what you're seeing. Using visualization in this way has its roots in Hab's Law, which says that when you link information together, the neurons in your brain fire up and fuse, therefore helping you remember one thing and then the other thing it is linked to. It is a very effective way to learn several pieces of information linked together. Remember, memory markers need to be obscure and creative. Let your imagination run wild. For example, if you wanted to remember Michael and Alice's names, perhaps because they're your new work colleagues, you could visualize Michael Jackson. Picture him in all his finery, strutting around the stage. But the stage could be your workplace, which links it back into the place where Michael is in your real life. Then, suddenly out of nowhere, Alice in Wonderland grabs Michael and pulls him down the rabbit hole, which exists in the office canteen. That relatively obscure and strange image will help you remember their names. Chapter 6. Utilize different strategies to boost memory and information intake. Another helpful way to boost your memory is to use the LOCI method, better known as memory palaces. A memory palace is a picture you create in your mind, and then explore, planting markers to help you remember a sequence of information. Jonathan Levi used this method to help him remember his TED Talk, and it worked very well. A memory palace can help you remember large pieces of information linked together. Your base, or your palace, needs to be somewhere you've been before, so that you can visualize it in your mind. An old workplace, a restaurant you visited, or an old home. Plan out your memory palace on a piece of paper first before you start exploring it in your mind to help you remember information in the correct order. For example, perhaps you're trying to remember a speech, as Levi did, and you would then explore the palace in your mind, planting markers around the palace to help you trigger memory markers. This would allow you to deliver your speech in the proper order, including all the correct information. You will improve the more you use this method. However, planning it out beforehand will help you become more effective. Many American educational institutes now use the SQ3R method to help students study and memorize information. SQ3R is an acronym that stands for Survey, Question, Read, Recall, Review. To the SQ3R, you will begin by skim reading the information you need to learn, questioning why you need to know it, and then attaching meaning to it. In the next step, you'll read it thoroughly before trying to remember what you've read. This is recall. Lastly, you will review your new information by looking at it from different points of view. Remember, the SQ3R method helps you prepare for learning effectively, priming your brain. Chapter 7. Cross-pollinate your learning efforts for greater success. You might think that it's counterproductive to try to learn several things at once, confusing your brain and making it harder to remember different pieces of information, but the opposite is true. This type of learning, called cross-pollination, has been proven to be very effective. The more you try and learn anything, the more you're preparing your brain to be in the suitable space to absorb knowledge. The idea of cross-pollination is that one subject will always overlap with another in some way. For instance, if you want to learn how to become a better public speaker, you could also study body language techniques and how to show confidence. Then you create the perfect storm to allow you to learn and master whatever skill you've set your sights on. Keep in mind, the more you learn, the keener and more eager you will be to continue. Teaching other people or sharing your knowledge can benefit your own learning efforts. Explaining something to another person motivates you to learn it properly. Also, when you learn something and then present it, you're learning twice because you're opening yourself up to the other person's perspective of that information. This can help improve your own understanding and broaden your view of it. Of course, you also don't want to embarrass yourself if you're sharing information with another person. So it increases the stakes and means you're motivated to understand the subject inside and out. Conclusion Understanding that learning is a skill of its own allows us to learn information and new knowledge far more effectively. When we start school and study new subjects, we simply get on with it, never really stopping to think about the best ways to take that information and understand it. As we grow, information bombards us and the pressure to understand it all can be overwhelming. It's for this reason that many students become stressed out before exams. They try to cram as much information into their minds as possible, but they don't absorb it effectively. Then, when the time comes to recall that information, they struggle to find it. For instance, if you want to learn how to memorize a poem, you might think that you just need to read it a few times and that will sort things out. Yet, yeah, that's not the most effective way. 
Instead, create a memory palace to visualize the poem in your mind. That poem will stick for years. By taking a step back and understanding how to learn and improve your memory to retain that information, you'll find that you not only understand more, but you retain it too. Whenever you need to wow someone with a fact or display your knowledge of a specific subject, you'll find it much easier to recall and relay. Learning isn't about trying to fit as much as you can into your mind. It's about knowing the best ways to use specific strategies and get the most out of your learning endeavors. Perhaps not all the strategies mentioned will work for you, but you may find one that really connects with your goals and helps you achieve whatever you have your eye on. Try this. Identify why you want to learn something. How will it help you reach your end goals? Instead of reading about something, get your hands dirty and actually do it. When reading a new piece of information, skim reading it before delving into it will prepare you to learn it.